All right, thanks, Arpit. Um, thanks, guys, for having me. Let me pull up my slides here. Assuming you can see my screen. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I've been, you know, I've been working as Arpit said in, in LF Edge for quite a while. I've been actually doing uh, first IoT then edge computing for the past eight years, you know, starting from the big uh, IoT buzz that uh, you know happened in 2014. So, uh, you know, undisclosed location 2014. You know, Doctor Evil is. Uh, predicting 50 billion devices um, you know, out there. And, and you know, it, it didn't quite pan out that way uh, over time. Um, a lot of it's been happening kind of behind the scenes, but what's been challenging is um, kind of getting past some of the like the systemic issues behind IoT. Um, I like to say that we're kind of just now getting out of the AOL stage of IoT. So if you guys uh, know of AOL, like back in the, you know, late 90s, you'd get the little CD in the mail and you'd be able to um, you know, install it and start getting connected online and whatnot. Very locked ecosystem, literally using their keywords to search for things. And then all of a sudden people realize, huh, I can just get on the internet, you know, and, and then Google comes along and, and things change. But, you know, IoT has been very much um, a progression. It started going vertical uh, before, before horizontal. Uh, you know, really is about use cases, um, but a lot of folks were kind of making it about platforms up front. Um, and the top challenges with IoT and, 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 and also Edge, which we'll talk about here in a minute, they have nothing to do with technology. It's, it's people, you know, stakeholder complexity. That's not my job. That scares me. I don't have the skills, et cetera. And uh, use case. And, you know, so many opportunities, you know, over the past number of years have been kind of stalled by that. And we're going to, we'll see the same with Edge, but it's not to say there is an opportunity, but it's just, it's really important to focus on these aspects of these solutions uh, as you go. So uh, what we've seen as also as a big trend with IoT is people start with what I call cheap edge, easy cloud. Um, I'm starting with a very, very lightweight device, you know, at the edge. Um, and then I'm going to run with, with um, you know, a public cloud offer or maybe some other platform, um, experimenting, um, developing new types of um, use cases. And you know, it's great to go straight to the cloud uh, up front. And that's where we saw a lot of the initial acceleration with IoT. But then you get the bill if you're just mindlessly pumping data there. And that easy button inherently comes with some level of, of, of lock-in. And so this is the big trade-off that people have been trying to make within the market is, you know, how do I find the right use case? How do I uh, enable a solution in an easy fashion, but also increasingly, how do I prevent being locked in? The same thing we've seen in kind of general IoT market, we've also been seeing, and with the clouds, we've been seeing in the industrial space for a long time. You know, why do we have, you know, projects within, you know, LF Edge, you know, EdgeX Foundry and Fledge, and you know, we've got a bunch of other, you know, uh, efforts out there. Why do we have the need to consolidate all these protocols into more, you know, consistent uh, communication protocols? Well, we have thousands of communication protocols because everyone created proprietary ones to try to lock you into their, their ecosystem. You know, all the industrial players, you know, everybody. Over time, though, what's happening is all of that that lower level functionality is being democratized so that we can get into new business models. And, and it's really about that at the, at the end, uh, just like how the internet democratized, you know, connectivity for the, for the average person and created this huge economic uh, benefit. And so I, I use this analogy. So if, if you know about like, so riptide current, um, human nature is to swim upstream, uh, trying to get back straight into the, uh, to the shore. And that's when people get tired and, and, and they might drown. The right thing to do in um, in a riptide current is to swim sideways, and so I, I like to say, you know, what we're doing with the open source community is we're we're helping swim sideways to get out of this mindset that I must kind of lock people in. I need to go after and, and kind of lock people, you know, customers into my solution. It really is about building an open ecosystem um, uh, across you know the, the landscape because you know, starting with IoT and now Edge, it is really really complex. There is no single edge. There's never going to be one cloud. You have lots and lots of different devices out there. The closer you get to the physical world, the more complex you know, everything gets. And so this is where open source becomes so important uh, you know, as, as we continue to see the market evolve from like lock-in to more kind of composable open infrastructure that then you apply the, the special sauce to. 
you know, so so edge continuum. This is uh, from the LF Edge taxonomy white paper that we had put out as a community a couple of years ago, and we're doing a refresh now. You know, it goes from constrained devices on the you know, far left up to regional data centers on the far right. And there are inherent trade-offs as you go across the spectrum. And the paper goes through that in great detail. When you look at edge, you know, and, and even the relationship to IoT and of course AI and 5G and digital twin and you know, all the different you know, trends, we're seeing a, tra a, a trajectory where we've got kind of the operations world OT or kind of IoT lightweight use cases moving right from kind of the, the physical world. And we've got sort of the IT principles or cloud principles moving left along this continuum and sort of converging in the middle. Um, OT, IoT up tends to be more kind of lightweight uh, device management, but then maybe I'm evolving into you know, more kind of IT principles and, and composable applications, software defined infrastructure, things like that. IT or cloud down, you know, the telcos, you know, very important here as, as we come down. This is like, how do I extend principles from the data center as far left as I can? I want to extend the public cloud experience as far left as I can, where I just think about you know, distributed edge resources as, or compute as just resources until it just breaks and I have to go embed it. This is that that kind of uh, trajectory we're seeing, you know, on both end. Um, you know, Gartner refers to it as, um, you know, uh, 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 cloud in and edge out, um, but it's the same difference as these two different uh, trajectories coming at it. Uh, a lot of people are still kind of learning how to spell edge, um, same thing with IoT, uh, but also there, we're seeing more and more really valuable use cases pop up. Uh, computer vision is a killer app for edge computing. You know, raw, raw video data is expensive to send across networks. But a lot of the infrastructure that we're building within the open source community, and it really is about how do I go scale it? How do I you know, be, be the most effective on the above the um, that core infrastructure in terms of differentiation? That's where the money is long term. It's new services, it's new experience, it's not the plumbing. And this, of course, is why open source is so important. Got to have the use case. Then people care about kind of those top line apps and, and maybe specialized hardware, but then they need that underlying engine and, and that's so much of it, whether it's the application frameworks we're building in the community or the underlying um, management and security elements across the different projects. You know, it's, it's those enabling elements that are going to really help people scale. Um, won't go through all the, the nuances here, but and we're, we're detailing this out on the, the new white paper. It's another click in from that taxonomy uh, for edge. There's kind of four unique paradigms across the spectrum in terms of, you know, embedded devices inherently, you know, uh, custom per device given resource constraints. You know, end user devices are well established ecosystems around Apple and you know Android and Microsoft. Data center we're seeing evolve as it kind of comes left, and then there's sort of this in between uh, distributed edge as, as as we see it, and that's that convergence point between these paradigms. Uh, you know, Open Horizon is doing great work with you know, kind of bleeding between distributed edge and client devices. And, you know, uh, um, Sam even talked a little bit about that. Uh, you know, it, it, the KISS rule in this case is keep it separate. Uh, it, it, infrastructure plane and application plane, super important to keep separate. Uh, historically, with all the different platforms, you know, IoT, hundreds of platforms, everyone blended everything together and I do everything. What we're doing within the open source community is we're providing tools that, that allow you to enable you know, both planes to be modular and, and separate, and then you pick and choose the best mix as you go. And then you figure out where you want to differentiate on either side of the, the equation. But um, you know, it's really important to not lock everything together because the odds that you'll have one cloud, one use case, one set of devices, one, one set of apps going forward as a business are pretty much zero. And so you want very, very flexible infrastructure that can run any application. So you know, we have the, the projects within LF Edge, and of course, we're collaborating with the, the networking community and, and CNCF, um, but they're laid out across that infrastructure and, and application plane. You know, we're working towards how do we harmonize more and, and build out that, um, you know, that, that ability for developers to leverage components, focus on value. Uh, you know, in this market, I think you win by merit, not lock in you know, going forward. And it's about the pace of innovation, and we're just helping with that. Uh, no, the cloud is not you know, going to get eaten by the edge, as you know, people like to say. Um, it's really about this sort of symbiotic relationship between the two. As I mentioned, the goal is really how do I extend that cloud experience out to the field, um, you know, enable rapid development, you know, cloud native development. How do I also still enable legacy support for software? 
where you run a workload across the edge to cloud continuum just is going to depend on the balance of security performance and costs and the best we can do as a community is to enable the plumbing that that enables that um, that balance in an open way advanced class you know longer term and you know alvarium is a project i've been working on where we just got that into linux foundation it's complementary to all the other projects it's about how do i interconnect ecosystems you know across a supply chain or retail crossover into the home or healthcare you know, insurance all of these different ecosystems starting to build new types of business models and experiences for for uh, end users and this notion of trust fabrics and how do i bake trust into data uh, this will never happen. This long-term potential will never happen without open infrastructure. Just like the internet, all the economic gain over the years will never happen without open infrastructure. And that's where the plumbing we're building today is going to lead us to the future. You know, as a business, you should focus on some clear use cases. Just go, um, you know, develop something that makes business impact. Of course, today for your, for you, but think about how you build. Um, today to get to that future of entirely new businesses based on interconnecting all these different ecosystems. Um, so basically, you know, hey, we're getting out of the AOL, st AOL stage of IoT. Um, you know, we're seeing convergence from both directions. Um, you know, it's really about the edge is the last cloud to build. How do I get the easy button? You know, everywhere, I just think of resources, where, wherever they are, data center out in the field, doesn't matter as much as I can. And, um, you know, and then, but we'll also recognize that there's different trade-offs, you know, whether you're latency critical, latency sensitive, are you in a secure data center, are you not? These are why we have different tool sets that, that are similar in principle, but necessarily different. And eventually this notion of trust fabrics will turn security into a profit center where I can actually make new money based on this, this infrastructure. So um, that's my time. You know, I think I have a couple minutes for, for questions. Um, but uh, I see a couple, I don't know, Arp, but if you Yeah, were. yeah. No, thank, thank you, Jason. Uh, if you can stop sharing, then you would probably be on the screen. There you go. Okay, very good. Uh, so again, as, as I said, if you have questions for Jason, feel free to ask them in the Q&A box on the right. Um, I'll get started with, with, with one question. I think your, your title of the talk was, was uh, quite challenging, right? It's like, <laughs> It's the, hey, software, it's the world is edge eating the cloud and cloud eating the edge. And I think you've set it up correctly uh, because, you know, right after this, we'll have folks from Google Cloud talking about, you know, how it, oh, it kind of going away. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah no, so that's that's cool. Um, no, so so one fundamental question is, you know, we we had confusion on terminology. You know, because people were using thin edge, thick edge, far edge, near edge, cloud edge, this edge, that edge. And I think that terminology was all relative to where you are right. uh, and your place in the network. And I think that has been taken away with the LF edge terminology white paper that kind of you help in the community. So so with the terminology now straightforward or at least standardized um, in terms of, you know, uh, terms that are unique, um, do you ever see either the access mechanisms or the protocols like the messaging protocols, or, um, I mean, we can always say that the shape and the form factor of IoT devices are always gonna be custom for each vertical, right? I mean, that's a given because of, you know, healthcare or, or, or automotive or whatever, right? Like regulations and, and environments. But what do you see the future of sort of access mechanisms and the messaging, at least a couple of layers down? Uh, and, and if they are gonna be separate, you know, don't you think the relevance of frameworks becomes even more important? Yeah, it's incredibly important. I mean, the old standards joke is we're going to fix the standards problem with one new standard. Um, <laughs> you know, the odds, the odds that there's going to be one protocol or even a small set of protocols for communications, as one example, anytime soon, are zero. And this is why you know we've been building these interoperability frameworks. As I think we're all here because we know that open source is a modern way to drive standards. And it really is about frameworks. It's about interoperability through APIs and modularity. Uh, of course, also enabling lots and lots of differentiation around the wheel. It's uh, um, you know the whole point with open source is uh, you know, avoid undifferentiated heavy lifting. But you know I also say you have to democratize the South, i.e. connectivity um, to monetize the North. That's where the money is. It's in applications, it's in services, it's all that kind of stuff. It's not the plumbing. Um, okay. But yeah, I, I, I think the framework 
approach is extremely important, not only for developing things, but also how do I make sure I don't get locked into one solution stack? Got it. Got it. No, that's excellent. Uh, there's a question here which says, uh, can you elaborate on, on the edge hardware in IoT? Will that be standardized, right? Um, yeah. and, and is there any specific, uh, you know, standards or, or organization that we should be looking at? Well, I mean, of course, we've got Open Infrastructure Foundation, and there's other you know elements, and there's like really great work happening overall. But if you look at the if you look at the continuum from regional data centers to a smart light bulb or a thermostat or a sensor, the hardware inherently gets more and more complex and fragmented, you know, like exponentially as you go left. I mean, every connected device is a different form factor. It's custom. I mean, toaster is a little different than a light bulb. Um, it's very, it's generally consistent as you go through data centers, you're going to start seeing some evolution when you can get into the telco space in terms of specific telco certifications, maybe I need short depth, whatever. But then once you get into the physical world, it gets more and more complex. And so I don't believe that hardware, depending on where you're at, in the data center edges, yeah, we'll see standardization, we already kind of do. In the far, like kind of more the IoT physical world, we won't see as much standardization on the hardware because of inherent physical characteristics that are required. But because of the software capabilities, you know, Raspberry Pi with eight gigs of memory, like we're getting more and more capable hardware, the software frameworks can get, can get standardized all the way down to the point where you just can't run Linux anymore and have to go embed it. So while the hardware complexity goes like exponentially up this way, the software complexity is pretty flat and it goes up and then it goes up when you go to embed it. <laughs> That's yeah. the opportunity for us. That's when I say extend public cloud experience you know, down the continuum until you just can't anymore. That's based on the resource of the box and those resources, they're getting more and more capable. We can run cloud native on a Raspberry Pi. That's, that's, that's the, the opportunity is to standardize the software frameworks, even though the hardware is going to be unique. I know we're kind of at time, okay. but. Okay, but that's absolutely the perfect segue into our next <laughs> presentation. So thank you for setting it up, Jason. Appreciate All right. it. I'm your Ed Thank McMahon you. today. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Talk to you all later. Thanks for having okay. me. Okay. All right.